Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about the phylum flatty hermites and we'll be following this outline. What are flatty hermites? Characteristics of flatty hermites. Remember, flatty hermites is also regarded as the flat worms. Classification of flatty hermites. I'll be talking about the class Tuberlaria, class Trematoda, class Monogenia, and the class Cestuda. Flatty hermites are commonly regarded as flat worms. As you can see from the diagram being displayed or the picture being displayed on the screen, they are actually flat. They are dosoventrally flattened. That's the reason why they are called the flat worms. They comprise of more than 1,300 species of animals. Some are actually small in size, while some can be several meters in size. Flat worms can be parasitic, such as the tapeworm or the flukes, while others are free living, such as the planera. Let's talk about the characteristics of flatty emitters or flat worm. As you can see from the diagram, they are tripoblastic. Now, take a look at the diagram critically. You can see the ectoderm, you can see the mesoderm, and the endoderm. They are bilaterally symmetrical, which means that their body can be divided into two equal halves through just one plane. Their body is dosoventrally flattened, which gives them the name flat worm, and their genital and oral aperture is actually located in the ventral surface. They are actually acolomate. In other words, they do not possess internal body cavity or space other than the digestive tube. Digestive system is incomplete. This actually means that they possess only one opening to the external environment. This opening in platform is regarded as the mouth, which is used for both ingestion and ejection, as you can see from the diagram on the screen. They possess simple sense organs. Some actually have eye spore. As you can see from the diagram, their body is soft and unsegmented. We know that some are parasitic, such as the tapeworm, the flukes, while other species are actually free living. They are actually in the organ level of organization. As you can see from the screen, the space between the body wall and the organ is filled with connective tissues. This connective tissue is termed the parenchyma and it actually helps in food transportation. They lack the system level of organization, and as such, skeletal, circulatory, respiratory system are actually absent. Take a look at the flatworm on the screen. They use protonephridia for excretion. As you can see from the diagram, they are simple sense organ comprised of lateral nerve cord, cerebral ganglia. As you can see, they also possess ocelli or eye spore. Flatworms are hermaphrodites. This means that a single individual can produce both the male gamete as well as the female gamete. Flatty hermites are capable of reproducing both asexually and sexually. Sexual reproduction involves the production of gametes which fuses to form zygote, while asexual reproduction may involve binary fusion. In the case of Planera, binary fusion occurs by the organism simply splitting into two halves and each part regenerate the lost part to form two separate individuals. Note that this organism possesses great regenerative ability. Let's talk about the classification of flatty hermites. The phylum flatty hermites is divided into the following classes. Class Tuberlaria, Class Trematoda, Class Monogenia, and Class Cestuda. Let's talk about the class Tuberlaria. The tuberlarians possess flattened soft bodies like every other flatty emitters, and they are usually free living. Examples include the planera, as you can see on the screen, the microstomon, planoceras, and others. They are acolomates, which means they lack body cavity, and majority are actually hermaphrodites. Let's talk about the second class, trematoda. Trematoda are generally regarded as the genetic fluke. They are usually cylindrical or leaf-like in shape, as you can see from the diagram. They possess ventral and oral suckers. However, the suckers lack hook. Their elementary canal, as you can see from the diagram, possess two main branches. It should be noted that trematoda or trematodes are actually hermaphrodites. You can see from the diagram that they exhibit indirect development. Their first host is actually a mollusk, as you can see from the diagram, and their final or definitive host is often a vertebrate. They are parasites of vertebrates of various classes. Examples of trematodes include the Schistosomia, 
Parsiulia, and others. The next class we are going to discuss is the class Monogenia, which are commonly regarded as monogenetic fluke. They are leaf like to cylindrical in shape, possessing a posterior attachment organs with suckers or hook or both in some cases. As you can see from the diagram, you can see the posterior attachment organ called the haptor or opis haptor. It should be noted that they are hermaphrodites exhibiting direct development with a single host. They are all usually parasitic on gills and skin of fishes. Examples of this monogenetic fluke include the gyrodactylus, polystoma, and others. The last class we are going to discuss in this video is the class Cestoda. The Cestodes are commonly regarded as the tapon. It should be noted that this name is because of their tape-like shape possessing scholars with hook or sucker, occasionally both for attachment. As you can see on the diagram, you can see the tape-like shape of the cestod, the tapeworm for example, and you can see the suckers, the hook. They do not have digestive system as you are aware of they are parasitic and they often absorb nutrients from the host gut. It should be noted that their body is divided into a series of proglotids. Cestodes are usually hermaphroditic and they exhibit indirect development, possessing two or more hosts. To be specific, they are parasitic in the digestive tract of all vertebrate classes. Examples of this organism include the tinea genius, the tinea solum, and the tinea saginata, and other organisms. This is the end of this lecture. Details of these individual parasites. Different parasites will be treated in our parasitology series. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.